Great that you guys are back. Thank you for sticking with me. If you guys, uh, if not, you can always catch us on the recording. But what I want to do today is a quick little just discussion on 10 reasons that traders fail. And the idea came from um, actually a trader named Steve Burns, uh, a trader and educator, I think in the stock market. We post a lot of interesting things, uh, especially on trading psychology and working with new traders. And he put out a blog post and it was 20 reasons that traders fail. And I was, I was reading it. And what I did was I went through it. I kind of consolidated those reasons, took the 10 that I thought were most important to me, and just want to bring them to you guys and kind of share some of my personal experiences with them as well. Um, if you guys don't know me, uh, my name is Akil Stokes, obviously. I am a full over at Trade Empowered. However, once upon a time, I was in the same shoes as many of you. I was a, a prospective trader who just learned about the market and and had dreams of becoming independently, consistently profitable, but really didn't really know how to get there. And I took my bumps and bruises. I tried, I started off in the stock market and when I made the switch to Forex, um, it was quite the learning, uh, learning curve. Uh, I tried to do it myself for the longest time. Eventually I realized that trying to do it myself wasn't working and I went and I got educated. I, I paid for a, a trading education course, found me a trading coach and a trading mentor, went through the course, came out the course and still struggled. Um, eventually I did get on my feet. I then went into managing money for others as a way to turn trading into a business. Had a wonderful experience managing money for a little bit and then it just got really, really, really bad. It just wasn't something that I liked, very, very stressful um, and went back to, uh, again, just trading for myself and trying to find a way that way. And then eventually I was approached about doing education. I actually started a blog post where I was sharing my experiences. Again, I had luxury uh, of going through lots of ups and downs and a lot of learning experiences in my trading career. And I was blogging, just sharing those experiences in hopes that it would help other traders. And well, my trading coach, my trading mentor caught wind of that. He said, hey, um, we're building this trading education company. How would you like to be a coach? And I said, no way. Um, and then eventually I realized that I had to do something business related. It was either go back to managing money, which is something that paid the bills pretty well, but I just didn't like it. It was a stressful time, wasn't happy with life, or try this new route of educating others and coaching others, which I absolutely love. Um, not only does it help me as a trader, I go over and over again, um, but I get to see people fulfill their dreams. I get to see people that were in a similar place as I was in. I get to see them kind of get it, understand it, make something of it, and then go on to live a life of their dreams, which is pretty cool. Um, Barry White voice. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm 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 a little uh went for a went for a seven eight mile run. Um, literally like 15 minutes ago, I got back. It was um rough. We're doing this charity challenge for uh, Chestnut Treehouse uh, Children's Hospice over in the UK, over in Sussex. Um, so we're trying to run as many miles as we can in order to raise money to help these children, help these children and help these families out. So after my live trading room day, I snuck out. Did about eight miles, which took me an hour, came back and, and tried to get going. So I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Um, but let's get started um, with our presentation. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through 10 reasons. I was going to try and, and make it interactive um, with you guys, but it seems like there's a massive delay as far as um, the, the chat that you guys are seeing. So it probably won't be as interactive as I like, but we're going to try and we're going we're gonna to go. My mic is out of control. Gosh, I'm I'm dying here. What is what? Well, if the mic is bad, it's bad. Um, is it is it is it really bad, guys? This is this is just it's failing massively. This is we usually do this on Omnovia. We invite you to a private room. This is my first time really doing something like this on Google. Um, so this may be the last time I ever do it. <laughs> If Google's not going to work well, I figured it's, it's easier for you guys. All right, perfect. Well, if it's bad, oh, I'm sure I'll do this again at some point. All right, so let's get started. Ten reasons, ten reasons traders fail. Um, we're going to start off with, uh, obviously, number one. And number one is they risk too much to try and make so little. And this is funny. This was actually um, a topic that I, I shot out a quote this morning. And, and when I say risk too much and try to make too little, it, it's not necessarily like that in the beginning, but it ends up being like that due 
to one of the most common ways of self-sabotaging yourself, which is called early profit taking. Um, I'm sure many of you can relate to that. I have had many times where I've taken profits early, um, <laughs> and unfortunately, it can ruin your trading. And early profit taking is caused really by the fear um, that the market either won't reach your predetermined targets or the fear of giving profit back. And imagine yourself being in a trade where you're looking at a trade, let's say you have targets 50 pips away and the market is up to about 40. And it's just, it, it gets to 40 pips with no problem. It's, it's you're, you're feeling good, it's free money. And then it starts to go sideways and you're sitting there and you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, the bears must be taking over. This, that, all these, all these negative thoughts start entering your head. And before you know it, you start saying to yourself, ah, well, 40 is close to 50, so I'll, I'll, I'll just take it. I'll just take it right now. And that is a big mistake. It feels good at the time. Um, there's a common saying in the market, which is completely false, but it, it's a lot of rookie traders think you can't go broke taking profits. You absolutely can go broke taking profits, especially if your profits aren't outweighing your risk. And what I mean is this, when you get if you set up a strategy with a positive expectancy, um, let's just say your 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 target your profit taking should make up for your losses. So everyone's going to take losses. We'll get into that a little bit later. Everyone's going to take losses, but your profit taking your wins should make up for your losses, right? When you start sabotaging your wins, when you start not winning as much as you're supposed to, as far as your pip amount, when you start cutting your targets in half, you get to the point where your wins no longer make up for your losses, and you can actually have a very high win percentage but lose money. I remember there was a point in my trading where I was uh, hitting at 70%. I was winning seven out of every 10 trades. However, one of the reasons I was hitting at such a high percentage is because I, I wasn't allowing price to get fully to my profit targets. I wasn't allowing price to get fully to my profit targets. I was taking it early. So I was getting all these extra wins. However, because these wins were smaller, right? Because these wins were smaller, I, wasn't, I was not allowing these wins to make up for my losses. So I would have five wins and then maybe two losses that completely wipe out all of that profit. So I was winning a lot, but I wasn't seeing the profit and I wasn't seeing the expectancy that I wanted out of my system. And typically traders do not move their stop losses back. They'll keep their stops the same. The risk is always the same. If anything, they'll increase their stop loss to try and give themselves extra protection. Um, but they tend to sabotage themselves by taking profits early and, and that can end up being um, a really big mistake. So number two is going to be this. Number two is going to be they trade with the probabilities against them. And the question you always want to ask with your system is, do you have an edge? Do you have an edge? Does your trading system have a positive expectancy? Meaning that if you were to consistently execute your trading strategy or system over and over again without error, meaning without sabotaging yourself, does it produce a profit? Now, it seems like common sense, right? It seems like common sense that every system should have that, but you'd be surprised at how many traders are trading systems that they've never back tested and really they have no idea if it's actually profitable. You know, how many, how many of you guys have ever done that? How many of you guys have ever traded a strategy or a technique without even knowing if it produces profit? Maybe you've seen a video of it, maybe you've read it in a book, but you actually, you don't know for sure that it actually makes money. right? A lot of you. So you always want to make sure that you have an edge. In order to be a consistently profitable trader, you need, you need to have a system or strategy that has a positive expectancy. This means that over time, what you're doing is proven to produce profit. Believe it or not, again, some traders don't know that. And what happens is when these traders reach a point where their system starts to face a drawdown, and a drawdown is going to come in, in any system. A drawdown is a period of time where your system is taking losses. You're just not making money. When you get to that point in your system, you tend to give up on your strategy, give up on your system, bounce to the next super secret system or strategy, and then you just repeat the process over and over again. You trade that strategy for a little bit, it enters a drawdown, you lose confidence, you quit on your system before it has a chance to make profit again, and you bounce to the next one. So too many traders are trading systems or strategies where the probabilities actually aren't in their favor and they have no idea if it's actually a good system or strategy. Number three, is going to be they think trading is easy money and only focus on getting rich. And I know many of us have been here. I know I personally, the reason I, I made the jump from the stock market into the Forex market 
is because I was told that Forex was a get rich quick scheme. I was told that Forex was a get rich quick scheme. I, I saw all the stuff on the internet. I saw all the people that have YouTube videos driving around in Ferraris and Lamborghinis saying Forex money. This is what I made trading this and that. And it, it, I wanted a piece of that. I'm not going to lie. In fact, I had got to the point where, where I thought that, hey, if I can just make 20 pips a day, that would be about 100 pips a week, 400 pips a month, be a little bit under 5,000 pips a year. Add a little bit of money management to that, increase the position size. In about 10 years, I can probably be worth a million dollars. And I thought it was that simple. I don't remember the exact details, but I had it, I had it written down on a piece of paper on how I was going to become a millionaire making 20 pips a day in a few years. <laughs> Foolish, but I know a lot, a lot of us think that. A lot of us are brainwashed because that's the first thing we see whenever we search Forex, whenever we read anything about Forex. That's the first thing we see is the, the flashiness and thinking it's easy. And obviously it's not. Um, shortcuts will leave you cut short. If you take shortcuts, the market will punish you. Right. If you if you are so obsessed with the outcome and by outcome, I mean the profits, the glamour, the glory, and you're not focused on the process. So the steps that it takes in order to be a successful trader, you're going to leave yourself overexposed and you're going to sabotage yourself psychologically. And eventually you will go broke. It always happens. I, you guys have seen it. I hear it almost on a daily basis. Traders from sto uh, stories from traders that say, hey, kill. Started trading with five thousand dollars made a 50% return in my first month. And then two months later, I blew it all. You hear it over and over again. And it, it sucks so many people in. So trading isn't easy. Trading is simple. It's far from easy. But you need to focus not on getting rich, not the outcome goals, but the process goals. Do Trading the right way. Doing the right type of process. So that's number three. Number four, traders blow up due to improper position sizing. The number one rule of trading is this. What do you guys think the number one rule of trading is? What is the number one rule of trading? Who can tell me? It's right there on the screen in front of you. <laughs> don't go broke. The number one rule of trading is don't go broke. The key to trading is conservation of capital. That's the key to long-term trading. It's not about making as much money as you can, as quick as you can. It's about conserving capital. As long as you have a chip and a chair, you can play the game. Meaning as long as you have money in your account, you can trade. As long as you can trade, you put yourself in a position to make profit. If you go broke, you're done. You're asked to leave the table. You cannot trade. You cannot produce profit for yourself. So instead of thinking that this is a get rich quick scheme, the main goal is don't go broke. And that means trading a very, very small position size. I always say this, your position size, we get the question a lot and there's, there's, a, there's a really a complicated formula on how to choose your position size. It has a lot to do with maximum drawdown, portfolio size, average trade um, winner, average trade loser. But in general, here's what I would say. If a winning trade Right. If a profitable trade, one that wins, gets you excited due to the amount of money you made, your position size is too big. If a losing trade, one that loses money, leaves you feeling depressed because of how much money was lost, you're probably trading too big of a position size. Your position size should be so small that you don't care. I repeat, your position size should be so small that you don't care. A winner should feel like, eh, good, good that I won, but didn't really do anything for me financially. A loser should feel like, ah, man, that sucks, I lost, but mm, it's okay. It should not have any emotional impact. If, if, if any losing trade or any winning trade makes you feel otherwise, you're probably trading too big. Probably trading too big. And I have a worry about trading too big. This is back when I used to manage money. Um, my goal when managing money was to make 3% a month, average 3% a month. That's what I was told by all the professional traders I talked to, all the professional traders that I trained underneath, right? In this industry, if you can make 2% a month on average, you're considered a good trader. If you can make 5% a month on average, you're considered an exceptional trader. So I went for 3% a month. It means I'm a little bit better than good. Um, not great. 
And I remember managing money for this one client and I was hitting my 3% goal, uh, probably around 4%, something like that for a few months. And I'm having this back and forth conversation with the client. Um, this is when I learned that you no longer have conversations with your client if you're managing money. You tell them this is when your quarterly statement is coming. Um, other than that, only contact me if you are giving me more funds to manage or if you are taking funds out. Aside from that, don't talk to me. But I had a really hands-on client. It was a tra it was a guy that I think think he should have been a trader, but didn't really do it. So he gave me his money to manage. Um, but he still had that trading bug into him. So he was always in my ear. Hey, Keel, did you buy this? Did you sell that? Um, a few good profitable months in a row and we were making some pretty good money however for him it wasn't enough the money was not enough for him he said well kill you you've been on this hot streak but you only made this much if we were to add to the position size wouldn't we make more and i'm like yeah yeah we would make more but you also leave yourself exposed to more risk um However, he wasn't buying it. He wanted to risk more. He wanted to take advantage of this hot streak. Now, you guys know what always comes after a hot streak. Think of a hot streak being like a new structure low to new structure high. What always comes after a new structure low to new structure high? What happens when the market is overextended? Type it in for me. And yeah, position, position size is uh, your lot size, yes. A drawdown. So being the young clients, because this is how I was living, um, I said, okay, well, I explained to him the risk. Here's the risk. We probably shouldn't do it, but if you want to, I had I had no spine, zero spine. Um, <laughs> so we did it. We up the we tripled the position size, if I remember correctly. We tripled the position size, and guess what happened? Guess what happened as soon as we upped that position size? Again, there's the delay here, so I'm, I'm trying to see what you guys are typing in, but it's like 10 second delay. <clears throat> yeah. Boom. Drawdown. And not only did we take a drawdown, now this drawdown would have been a, a regular hit with the normal position size. It would have been a small retracement, right? Would have gotten it out the way and get back to our winning ways. However, because we tripled our position size, we lost a lot more than expected. I remember it was, it, it almost all happened in a week. It was another overexposure deal as well there too, but lost almost $30,000 in a week. It was really like in a month's worth of time, but most of it came within a week, $30,000. Not only because we took a loss, but we, we were trading too big of a position size during that loss and it just, boom, all went downhill at the same time. Worst week of my life worst week of my life. I've never been so depressed. I always tell people if uh, back then, if I could have, if I could have afforded it to buy a new trading uh, system and computer, I would have broken everything. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the money to buy a new setup, but I would have broken everything. So don't blow up your account due, due to improper position sizing. That is a big, um, that is a big no, no. So let's go to the next one. Next one is going to be if I can get over here, hold on. It's tough doing all this by yourself on different things. Um, number five, blindly following others and traders not doing their homework. Do your own work. If you are looking to use the internet trading guru as a signal service, you're better off just signing up for a signal service or having your money managed by someone else. Every trader is different. There is interpretation in the market. So don't expect to exactly duplicate the results of someone else. If Gabrielle posts on the internet, hey, here are my back testing results for the advanced Gartley formation on the Euro dollar from the year 2013 to 2016. If you do the exact same back testing on the exact same time frame during the exact same period on the exact same pair, I guarantee your results will not be the same. Unless you're trading a mechanical system, and then in that, if that's the case, you're probably going to do some automated back testing instead of manual back testing. Your results are going to be different because we all interpret the market a little bit differently. So by blindly following someone else, it's, it's essentially just throwing your money in the air for no good reason and, and hoping it lands back in your hand. It is a big no-no. I remember back when I first started, uh, first started trading, I was in a chat form, devilish, devilish chat forms, never going there. And 
I used to sit in this chat form for days and days and days. I, I when I got into trading, I quit all of my jobs and kind of went all in. So I had nothing better to do all day. And I remember watching this chat form days and days and days. I always wanted to share, but I was always so nervous. I was always so nervous. And then one day I had a setup and I, 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 was, I was feeling gutsy that day and I, I posted it and I said, boom, Euro dollar, bullish opportunity at 142.33, send. And I was all excited. I had double, triple checked the trade. It was a good trade. Everything lined up the way my system went. I was excited to share it with the world and get ready to hear some positive feedback. I was looking for, hey, Kiel, good job. Hey, dude, I'm getting long too. That's awesome. You know, trading's a lonely, lonely place. So I was looking for some type of community. As soon as I post the trade, I forgot the guy's name. We're going to call him Pip Unicorn, right? There's always a Pip Unicorn in one of these trading forums. Pip Unicorn post in, or Pip Zilla, Big Pippin, whatever this guy's name was, post in. Uh, probably actually want to get short Euro dollar. And I'm like, what? I worked so hard in this trade, and this guy's saying I should get short? Now, of course, this guy's the most active person in the trading form. I've watched him for months. I have no idea if he's a good trader or not, but I watched him for months, and he's always posting, so he must be good. So I canceled my orders, and I got short. What happens? Trade goes long. Boom. Sabotage myself. I had a good trade lined up. Everything matched up. But because I followed this so-called internet guru, I lost money instead of giving myself the opportunity to make money. Even better. One time I blindly followed my mentor. I'm coming off two hot trading months, right, guys? Two hot months of trading. I mean, I'm on, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I can't be touched. Can't be touched. I'm, I'm winning everything. Everything I touch is turned to gold. Buy this. Boom. Winner. Sell that. Boom. Buy and sell this. Boom. 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 Right? Making money left and right. I'm feeling myself. I'm trading thing down. I can't be stopped. My mentor, Jason Stapleton, right, comes in and shares ideas. Says, hey, gang, I've got this trade idea for you. Aussie Canada. This is the trading opportunity of a lifetime. Aussie Canada, we're at all-time structure highs. The risk reward on this trade is seven to one, meaning that your potential reward is seven times your potential risk. Now, keep in mind, Aussie Canada at the time was not in my trading portfolio. Nor do I trade off the daily chart. It was too high of a time frame, meaning that the risk, um, the risk needed to involve myself in a trade on the daily was too big for my average uh, stop loss. So I'm not supposed to be trading this pair, but this is my mentor. This is my coach. He's saying this is the trading opportunity of a lifetime. Plus, I haven't lost in like two months. So what do you think I do? Boom. Fire the trade off. Get ready to count the money. Get ready to count the money. What happens? Immediate loser. Immediate loser. Blindly following someone else. Immediate loser. Not only that, because, and this goes back to one of our other lessons, because it was on a pair that I don't normally big for me to be trading on, that loss, that single loss, wiped out all of the two months of profit that I made. Two months of good trading down the drain due to one loss. all because I blindly followed someone else. Again, I got stories, guys. I've, I've been through a lot in my trading. Um, it's one of, one of the reasons I've become a good teacher um, is just because I've made almost every mistake you can possibly think of. It, it wasn't fun at the time, but it works now because now I can help you guys hopefully avoid some of these obstacles. So moving on, number six, we're getting there. The search for a magic system instead of a methodology. Too many traders try to shortcut this. They look for the quick fix. They spend too much time in search of a quick fix, make me money right away system that will deliver them all the glory and all the pips in the world instead of focusing on the basics of how to trade. Right? Systems often fail due to a trader's lack in trust or understanding of it. And traders can't understand a system. They don't know the basic on how to read a price chart. I've spoken to many traders who have blown money buying these, these cheap EAs, right? I bought this $19.99 uh, or this, this uh, $19.99 moving average trading system, this robot, and it lost me all my money. Looking for that quick fix. Even when I first got started, even when I first got started, when I went through, I, I told you guys a story earlier, when I, when I went through my, um, 
my training course, I didn't automatically come out a successful trader. I thought I would, but I didn't go about learning the right way. I went through my training course. I found a, a strategy that I thought could make me the most pips in the shortest amount of time, and I went for it. It was a trend continuation strategy. We called it the Fibonacci failure strategy. Good strategy. I no longer trade it, but it's a good strategy. And I traded it for a little bit. And eventually I started losing money and I jumped to another system. Now here's the key. The Fibonacci failure strategy is a trend continuation strategy, right? So I'm trying to hop on the trend, right? Pretty simple, right? Markets go up, they pull back, try to hop on the pullback, ride the next wave up. Now, so I'm trading this trend following and trend continuation strategy. However, guess who never took the time to learn how to read a price chart? This guy. So I'm a trend continuation trader, but if you were to ask me, if you were to put a chart in front of my face, I swear to God, if you were to put a chart in front of my face and say, Akil, is this chart bullish or bearish? I couldn't give you an answer. I couldn't give you an answer. I knew the strategy, but I couldn't read a price chart. And I look back at it now and I'm like, it's silly. How, how are you going to be a trend following trader if you don't even know how to identify a trend? And that was one of the biggest problems. One of the biggest problems. So make sure you learn those foundational elements first. No matter if you're going to be a, a counter trend trader, a trend continuation trader, a systems trader, a structure trader, a DSR trader, a Bollinger Band trader, a Hakanashi uh, trader. It, it doesn't matter. Deutschian channels, right? It doesn't matter. You need to know how to read a price chart. You need to know how a market moves, how a market works. If you don't, it's going to be very hard to trust, understand, and execute whatever system it is that you're trading. Number seven, getting there. We are getting there. Number seven, most new traders quit when they realize how much work is involved. Time and effort, guys. Two things it takes to be successful in this industry. Time and effort. It takes time. I mentioned before, it's not a get rich quick thing. It takes a lot of work. It takes a massive amount of effort. Like anything else, if you want to be good at something, it's going to take a massive amount of action, effort, and time. And before you get started trading, you need to ask yourself this question. Am I committed to going all in? Am I committed to going all in? One of my favorite stories, and I, I got to give it to you. I, I credit this trader for being honest. One of my favorite stories is the Xbox story. I was talking to a trader over on, uh, talking to a trader over on TradingView. And he had a question about backtesting. And he was explaining, hey, I hear you guys preach a lot about backtesting. Um, is it really that important? It seems like it takes a lot of time. And I said, well, yeah, backtesting sucks, man. Don't get me wrong. It's, it, it's, it's probably the most important thing you could do if you want to be successful as a trader. But, man, it sucks. Backtesting, for you guys that are unfamiliar, it's looking through historical data. It's having your trading system or strategy, the rules printed out, and going through one bar at a time years and years and years of trading taking stats taking notes to see if your system actually works and i know you guys are typing it already i can already see it you guys are typing already well kill what about automated back testing can i just throw it into a system and have it back test for me no you can if you plan on trading like a level three strategy, something that's going to execute all the trades for you automatically, yeah, it's fine. If you're going to be manually trading, you need to test it yourself. Why? Not only do you need the numbers, numbers is the least systems and strategies work. Now, you need to prove it to yourself. Most systems and strategies work. But manual backtesting, the importance of manual backtesting is training your eyes. You need to be able to see what you need to see in the market. Right? If you have a system or strategy that looks for a specific thing, a specific occurrence in the market, and your eyes, your RAS, particular activating system, isn't trained to see it, you're going to miss trading opportunities. If you're going to miss trading opportunities, you're going to damage your consistency. If you damage your consistency, you are probably going to sabotage your expectancy. In short, lose money. Miss trades, lose money. Make it simple for you. So you need to train your eyes um, to see. You also need to gain belief in your system. You need to see how your system operates during different stages of the market, during heavily trending and directional periods, during consolidative periods. It's consolidative a word? Periods of consolidation. It's a word now. I made it up. It's okay. Write it down. Call Webster's. Consolidative. If that's not a word, someone, someone let me know and I'll, uh, I'll copyright that right away. <laughs> but you need to see that. You need to experience that and really grow a belief 
in what you're doing. The only way to get through a drawdown, trading is tough. We'll get to this a little bit later too. Trading is tough. The only way to get through trading is to have a 100% belief in your system, right? There's a triangle. It's three things, belief, actions, results. If you have the belief, you will take the right actions. If you take the right actions, you will see the results you desire. Once you see the results you, would, you desire, it's going to give you even more belief in your system. And the triangle continues, belief, action, results, belief, action, results over and over again. So you need to do this. And I told the traders, backtesting takes time. For me, again, I was unemployed when I started trading. So I just backtested about 20 hours a day, right? I had my pizza. I had the Lost DVD series already. For you guys that know Lost, it's like 20, 20 seasons. So I had, I had plenty to watch. If I had to do it now, I'd probably do a Game of Thrones marathon or something like that. But um, yeah, I would sit down, I would eat, and I would, I would be, oops, sorry about that. I'd be in the numbers all day, all day. And it, it's, it's a, it takes long, it's frustrating, it stinks, but it's necessary. And the trader I spoke to, he said, well, are you telling me that if it, how can I, if, if I take all this time to back test, that means I won't have time to play Xbox. Coming in? Did I, did I hear that correctly? Can you, can you type that again for me? Not sure I read that right. Well, if backtesting takes as long as you say it does, how am I going to have time to play video games? Hmm. How am I going to have time to play video games? How will... Uh, you're not. You're not. You're not. You need to sacrifice that video game time to work on your trading, right? Time, effort, action. That's what you need. That's what you need. Now, to this trader's credit, I'm not trying to bash this trader. To this trader's credit, he said, well, it doesn't sound like something that I'm willing to do. I'm not willing to dedicate myself and take time away from my video games to be a successful trader. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. At least that trader's honest with himself and he knows that, hey, I'm not willing to commit. And if you're not willing to commit, don't waste your time. So I give him credit for that. But so many traders will, will, will say that they're going to commit. However, they never do. And they go in it half behind and the market ends up punishing them because the market will punish you guys. The main goal of the market is to make as many people as miserable as possible. So it will punish you if you're not prepared. Number eight, traders quit when they learn how many losers it takes to get winners. Learn to lose, guys. Hate to say it. Learn to lose. Every system is different as far as win percentage goes, but regardless, unless you have this magical system that never, ever loses, eventually you will take a loss. Eventually you will face a drawdown, and the only way to get past that drawdown is to trade through it. So get used to taking losses. Can you guys guess what my average win percentage is historically? Full-time, professional trader, trading coach, awesome dude. What do you think my, my average win percentage is historically? If you know the answer, don't, don't do it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's because if it's, it's coming through Google. A lot of people say my voice sounds weird. Um, so I apologize that I'm, I'm not up to the, the sexiness that I usually am. Um, I don't know. We're giving this Google thing a try. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to the normal way we do these presentations. But I want to try something different. Yeah, I'm about a 55% trader. Man, 34%. Gosh, you guys, man, give me some more credit than that. 1%. I'm not that bad, guys. Man, show me some respect. 1%. Gosh, <laughs> I'm 55%. I'm it could be. Maybe I have two mics going on it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Oh, well. 55%. So I, I lose almost as much as I win, guys. And I'm quite comfortable with that because I've been consistently profitable with that. Now, my winners are more than my losers, but I lose about the same amount of time as I win. And no matter what system or strategy you trade, it's going to happen. You're going to lose. You're going to face a drawdown. And I'll tell you what. If you're not willing to fight through that drawdown, if you're not willing to take those losses, if those losses are going to scare you away, you're going to end up quitting your system. You're going to end up bouncing to another system. That other system is eventually going to take losses. 
and you're going to repeat the process and you're never going to be consistently profitable. You're just going to, you're going to consistently bounce from one thing to another, looking for that holy grail, never getting it. And before you know it, five, 10 years of your life have passed. And if there's one thing we can't get back in life, it's so we can always get money back. That's fine. We can always make money back. You can't get time back. We can't get time back. But you got to tough through it. Number nine, traders quit if they don't have a passion for trading. Passion pushes you past the pain. This kind of goes to the, the don't get rich quick scheme. You, if you're going to be a trader, make sure you're in trading for the right reasons. Yes, it would be a lie to say that we're not all in trading to make money. We all want to make money. I think that is a goal for everyone. However, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. It, 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 making money, making profits can't be the only reason that you're trading. It can't be the only reason that you're trading. You need to have a, a general love, a general passion for what you're doing. You need to love the markets. For example, I, I couldn't ask to do anything better with my life. Sport to me, trading is like a puzzle, right? And I, I'm, I've always been a problem solver. So I love waking up each and every day. I love going on to my charts. I love looking at it and trying to figure out what the market's going to do. Now, I'm never going to figure out the markets completely. Never, ever. But I'm going to try. And it's fun to me. I love doing it. I get passion from breaking down a price chart, making predictions, seeing if those predictions come to light. And how do I know I have a passion for this? And it's not just about money. About two and a half, three years before I made any money for consistently losing money for three years straight, or I love what I do and I'm willing to lose money and still stick at it or stick after it because it's a passion of mine. And you got to love what you do. If you trading is a very lonely, 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 lonely sport. <laughs> field. Um, you got to love it. If, if you don't love what you do, it's going to be very hard to get past those very dark, lonely periods, and you're going to end up quitting. Passion is what's going to push you past the pain. Passion is what's going to keep you going when it seems like nothing else can. Passion is when, and once you become consistently profitable, passion is what's going to allow you to have the same energy each and every day after you're making money. Because I tell you what, when you're trading well, trading becomes boring. You become robotic. You trade the same way every day. Okay, if this, then that. If this, then that. And it's, it's, it's easy to kind of slack. But if you're passionate about what you do, again, it doesn't, it's not about the money anymore. It's about the game. It's about trying to figure out the markets. And that's what keeps that fire burning inside of you. Finally, number 10. We somehow made it through this slideshow with bad voice and the first one didn't work. Traders are not willing to pay their dues to the market. And this is one of, uh, I actually took, uh, I told you guys about uh, Steve Burns, his, uh, the top 20 list. I, these are actually a few of the things from his list that I tried to consolidate into, uh, into this, one, this one category. But it says, they are not willing to pay the tuition to learn to trade in time, study, and losing trades. They are crushed by the learning curve that they do not work hard enough to get through. We lose a lot of new traders when they realize that trading is actually harder than their job. The traders that don't make it quit when they are tired, frustrated, stressed out. The winning traders quit after they had figured out, figured trading out. These are all true. Like anything else, you must pay your dues. It's it it always I'm always surprised when when people think that you're supposed to get trading right away that you're supposed to just pick up trading and right away just start making money. What, what else in life can you just do that? Is there anything? Can you pick up a basketball and just become great right away? Doctors, right? Do you just say, hey, I want to be a doctor, and they just throw you a degree? You have to pay your dues. Dues sometimes come in the form of education. So someone like a doctor, they have to go to school for what, eight years, I think, to become a doctor? If that, if, if not more? Eight years of education just to do what they want? They have to pay their dues. 
learning experience, right? If you want to be a baseball player, you've got to work your way up through the minor leagues. Same thing with soccer. You got to work your way up through the lower levels, proving yourself at each point. It takes time. It takes effort. And sometimes it takes taking a step backwards instead of frontwards. It takes time. So don't be under the impression that you're supposed to be great right away. For most traders, it takes years. And I tell you what, even after you, let's say, you know, I tell this to my, my, the, the traders I work with, the ones in my training course, I say, even after you graduate the course, it's a three month course. Even after you graduate the course, you're probably going to spend about a year or two still get, still trying to get it. There's a big difference. It's like driving a car. There's a big difference between knowing how to drive a car and passing your driver's test versus actually being out there in the road with all the crazies. There is a massive difference. I like there's a there's a picture I really love. Let's see if I can bring it up for you guys. You guys can see it. There's a picture I really love that kind of illustrates what success looks like. And I see a, I see a person in the chat that said, "Yeah, I paid I paid seventeen hundred dollars in four years before making anything." And that's that what happens to most traders. We get a we we get a bad rep in education because we're we're charging people to teach them how to trade. But the truth is this, right? If you're not paying us, guess who you're going to pay? You're going to pay the market. You're going to pay the market. The market's going to take its due from you. It's going to teach you some financial lessons. We, we, we kid around. Me and uh, Jason Greystone, he's one of our, our trading coaches at Trading Power. We kid around. We say, when we were learning how to trade, right? We, we didn't take losses, all right? We, we, we invested in future education. So each loss was a lesson. Right. But the market's going to take its dues. It's, we talked to so many people that have spent more money trying to do it themselves in the market than actually what it would cost to, to take some of these training courses out here. You're going to pay your dues either way, either financially or in time, in most cases, both. But I love this picture because this illustrates what it looks like to be. To find success, and you, as you can see, it's not a straight line up. You just don't go from, hey, starting off and find success. Right. You go up. You kind of stay alive, you kind of maintain, and then you take a step back. But then you go up, you go a little higher, you have a little bit better uh, expectations, you realize it's not as easy as you thought it would be, and then you take a step back, right? You persevere, you fight through it. Yeah, I made a new structure high. I'm feeling stronger than ever. Then you take a step back. You're focused, you stick at it, you persist, then you take a step back. Starting to feel frustrated, so what do you do? You fake it. You fake it a little bit. You start telling yourself, I'm great. You start looking in the mirror, doing those positive affirmations. I am a great trader. I will analyze the market like a pro today, right? And then you make it to the next level. And then right before, right, you can see success. You can see it over the horizon. It's right there. And right before you find success, this is what always happens. And this is when most people quit. Boom, we call this rock bottom. We call this rock bottom. And usually this is the final straw for most people. They've paid all these dues for this long of a time. And then it finally seems like it didn't work. This is where I lost my, this is when I lost the $30,000, guys. Rock bottom. And you feel like everything you did before was pointless. It was a waste of time. I'm not cut out for this. And many people quit. Never people, many people never make it past this, this, uh, this spot. But there's a chosen few. The ones that refuse to give up, the ones that have that burning passion and desire to find success. They're stubborn. They don't believe in failure. That's not an option. You're down in the hole. Either you're going to die down there or you're going to claw your way out. And they say, hey, I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to give everything possible to go for it. All in. All in. Fully committed. Time, effort, action. And they find success. They find success. Now, what you don't see on this chart, what you don't see in that chart is that even after success, it, it gets even harder. Once you find success, if you get comfortable, you'll fall right back down in that hole. And I know one of my biggest fears as a trader is that one day I'm going to be back where I started. One day... I don't know why I, just, I say it in my head to motivate myself one day I'm going to take a step backwards and I won't be successful. And 
that fear of going back to the life of teaching and teaching in the schools and, and cleaning toilets at night as a janitor, that, the, the fear of going back to that life and not being able to provide for my family is what motivates me to push on each and every day. And I mean, I, some people are pushed by goals. I want to achieve this. That's why I'm going to work it. I, I'm, I'm not pushed by goals. I don't really care about goals. I'm, I'm, I'm pushed by fear of failure. I think that's, that's the worst thing for me. I don't want to fail. That's the most embarrassing thing for me. So I motivate myself that way of being so scared of failure that I will not allow it to happen. So those are 10 things, guys. Um, as you can see, I've personally related to a lot of them. I, I've been through it all. And if again, proven, proven um, example that you guys can make it despite where you're at, despite your struggles, you can make it as a consistently profitable trader. Um, and hopefully this was informative for some of you. Hopefully you found some obstacles that you didn't know existed and maybe this will help you avoid them in the future. So I appreciate you guys joining me. I, I apologize. Vision was bad again. We're just trying things out here on Google. I thought this was the best way to connect with you guys instead of Periscope. Um, so do me a favor, if you liked it, leave me a comment. Um, also like stuff like if, if the camera was blurry, if the audio got bad at certain points, just leave me a comment. Um, if it's good, I'd love to the, we do some private training workshops, um, but it's, I think it's easier this way than having you guys pay attention to emails and that way it's automatically recorded for you. So. I appreciate it. Um, until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. I'll see you guys tomorrow.